and we're going to start painting. We put on a bit of a wash. kind of explain what I'm doing as I'm going along but uh, this really is me this is I'm going to paint the street where I was born in acrylics so if you want to know where I grew up conditions in which I grew up I suppose this will be it Got a bit of a sketch from earlier on this year. Well, when was it? It was last year. In fact, it was this time last year, a year ago, I did the sketch. Okay. I'll talk about it as I go along because I want to return to my childhood in this little journey here. Oh, here, go Miles, how are you doing? Yeah. No, is that okay? No, that's fine. Listen, if you can't stay too long, that's fine. Drop back in later. I'll probably be doing this for an hour, it's probably as much as I could sort of manage anyway. I started very late today because I was doing computery stuff uh, all day. And so, while you're here, I'll just tell you that I would, I'm painting the street where I was born and uh, let me see if I can get up there. Just give me a second here. So I can see the, uh, the, the chats a little bit more easily on my phone. Take the volume down. Uh, I don't see, to, can't see how you look at the live chats to be honest, but anyway. So, I'm just putting in a rough idea of how the houses were. Let's put that there. They're all terraced houses. Uh, and they were quite tall. Uh, and I suppose reasonably big uh, for uh, you know, what you'd expect in a bunch of terraced houses. They were, you know, that my parents added a a kind of a third floor <laughs> for their bedroom because we were running out of room because there were five of us plus my grandmother and uh, and for a while my uncle John from Wexford was with us though he didn't like London so he moved and how does one see live chats on the phone Mm, mm, mm. Where was it? Yeah, I don't see how you can uh, see that. Okay, I mean, I'll just be blathering while I'm, I'm painting anyway. I wish I could see the. Let me pop this thing out so I can see it. Ah, oh, yeah, that's better. Every time you do anything in, in uh, one of these bit programs, it's never it's never what they say it's going to be. So I don't know whether you're familiar with uh, West London. But going into West London, they drove a motorway in um, in the in the early 1960s. Possibly around 19, about the year I was born, maybe even slightly before. 
and my mother had already bought the house, or well, mum and dad had already bought the house, so we were kind of, <laughs> we were lumped with a motorway outside our house. Uh, much to my mother's chagrin. And she joined a, a kind of a, a one-issue political party at the time, a pressure group called Homes Before Roads. And uh, got nowhere in the 1972 general election, so it took until then for her to, to, to get, get going on her... Uh, campaign. Now that's the motorway, so, and the motorway is up on stilts, like that, casting a shadow, because the, this is heading east into London, and we were in West London, so the shadows are really all kind of pointing that way, away from us. And then, just over there, lots of greenery, and Brentford nylons picking, poking up out of it, like an eyesore. That would be Brentford nylons there, and then here, that would be the Martini building, and this all was called the Golden Mile, all the way along here, right up to Osterley, which was kind of up the, the western end, end of it. But everyone used to park their cars here, you know, like that. And then there was three lanes of traffic here and another three up here, and then another six, I should say, up here. So there's three this side, three on the other side of, uh, of the road, and then another six up on an elevated section up here. Can you imagine all the lead in the petrol and the asbestos from, um, from the brake linings? Yuck. And anyone walking along would be casting a shadow that way. Okay, I'm going to fill that in. Oh, I'm painting in acrylics, by the way. This is uh, going back to my illustration roots, I suppose. red brick houses in that area, Victorian. Down there, and down there too. So I'm bending the, uh, bending the perspective around. And down at that end was a chip shop, and then the road went up from there to, to Ealing, and that way to Kew and to Richmond. Where's the cloth? Yeah. Let's put in a bit of sky. So I know, block everything in the way. I know where everything is. That can be the sky there. Up over Brentford Nylons. And let's put in some marks for the, just to distinguish the cars from the, the road there. They can all be red cars at the moment. Just so that I, I know where everything is. Yeah, that's true. The motorway story is in my, um, Oh, where is it? If I can 
you get back to. The funny thing is that I can't see a single one of the comments that you're making. Maybe I can't see them because I'm the one holding the, the live stream. So they can all be here as their cars. All these cars going in the left hand lane down to uh, down to the west. Off to, you'd be going off to, to Fishguard and the and the boat at uh, in Wales that direction. No, sorry, that direction, the other direction. This would be going into London. And here, so that's So this is not like a, it's not like a, a, a landscape painting or a still life painting. In this, I'm just sort of going off my memory and my sketch, of course. But my sketch was off uh, my memory anyway. And it's just sort of you come up with what you can, you can manage. So that can be the road or going into there. And when my mother was uh, doing the Homes Before Roads thing, campaigning, she was the candidate for, for some strange reason, Kensington. <laughs> she was interviewed by, she was interviewed by a Panorama and Man Alive and things like that. She, she was on television and everything, so kind of, amazed me at the time. She put on her telephone voice for... <laughs> Do you remember that? My people used to have a telephone voice. Like Cynthia Bucket in... Uh, I can't remember what that program was called. So that's their road, OK? And then let me just fill in that a bit. This is a kind of a, a roof, that, a kind of a mini roof, that ledge that came out over the top of the lower story. Let's put that in there like that. All the way around there like that. And I live round about here, let's say. That's where our house was, number 22. And next door to us were the Lynches, uh, who were, Mr Lynch was from and his wife were from Jamaica. And one day he was outside up a ladder painting this roof, this part here, or painting the, the probably the uh, window sills. And he fell off, poor man. And uh, we all rushed round to help him. But he spilled paint all over this and it was there for many years afterwards, this great big splodge of paint. I wonder what ever happened to him. Or a nice family. Okay, brighten that up a little bit. With some. I think I mustn't forget is the uh, the wall. We had a God, that's right. We had a front. Uh, it wasn't a front garden. It was like a. It was a front space, I mean, you could only fit a couple of bins in there. Let me put that in. It was kind of, it went along there like that, this wall. I'll have to put gaps in it uh, subsequently. This wall that went all the way down there. And when they were delivering coal, in the days when they used to deliver coal, house to house, there was a chute at the, on the, under the houses. Tip all the, the the coal down in, down the chute into the into a cellar. Windows there like that. And d despite all its sort of, I don't know, uh, Victorian. Dickensian sort of uh, feel to that place in Brentford. I loved it there. I thought it was a great place to live. More 
do cells. I always feel my way forward in these kind of paintings anyway. So they develop. And then it's around here like that. Usual problems, of course, with cameras straight in front of my, uh, my eye when I'm trying to paint. This being the edge of that bit of road. There. Put some shadows around the cars. The cars are casting shadows that way. So if we do that, then I'll remember where the cars are. And the cars were galore going along that place all day, all night. My mother couldn't sleep. Shadow being cast by an upright. Something like that. Cars, three lanes of cars. And same up here, more cars. I'll probably do a big painting in oils for, um, of this scene. This, so this could be a sketch for it, I suppose. That's the central reservation there on the motorway. When I was an apprentice, I used to cycle down here. I think it was four miles into Chiswick along this road. And the, way, the motorway does curve around it like that. And um, the way this thing curved, you could see these pillars revealed themselves one by one. Do you know, as you're coming around the, the bend, you saw one pillar, and then you saw another pillar, and then, you know, as you, as you went on. And somebody, some clever dick had written, it's good, on the first one, good, and then second one, morning, and then the third one, lemmings. <laughs> so everyone going to work in town was faced with this bit of graffiti every morning. Good morning, lemmings. <laughs> that was good. This is acrylics, and I always think that acrylics, the first, you know, the first, I don't know, half an hour or so of, of an acrylics painting is kind of hard work because the paint sort of soaks in a little bit because you know, it's water-based. And But once it, once it gets sort of uh, settled, it becomes... Uh, an easier job to paint. Hi, Oliver. How are you doing? Nice to see you. This is a bit of an impromptu thing. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm testing out a proposition for uh, a friend of mine. An absolutely brilliant painter and illustrator. Big influence on me called Paul Slater. And uh, he wants to do this, he wants to sort of record his working process. And uh, I hadn't really actually done what he was uh, asking for information for me, you know, because I do videos and he was asking how, how I arranged it all. But every time I do a video, it's like I'm learning the whole bloody process again. These are the roads, say. It's all very rough at the moment, and then it'll tighten up as he goes along. Yeah, cheers, Miles. Yeah, good luck. Have a lovely evening. I, I, yes, hopefully I'll still be here in an hour. This thing will probably go up on... Uh, it'll go up on, onto YouTube anyway. Oh, I've got a nice surprise with us. <laughs> it's good. 
often wonder what the situation is of uh, people watching these things. You know, for all I know, you could be sipping cocktails in a in a bar in uh, uh, I don't know Saint Juan le Pin or somewhere. I would imagine that you would would be. Uh, if you won't hear, but I'm painting. I'm painting where I grew up in West London, a place called Brentford. When I was a kid, we moved out of there when I was about uh, what, twelve or thirteen. Oh, hang on, how old were we? 74, so I was 12, yeah, I was 12 when we moved out of there. And we moved two miles back that way. And uh, moved to a kind of a far nicer place. If in doubt, put in a lot of vegetation. My memory of Brentford nylons was of a kind of a bluish building, so I'm going to stick that in there, kind of a mid blue, and with white, one of those god awful 1960s uh, buildings that was modelled on the cornflakes packet. Yeah. Fill in those details later. Let's put in the dark then. Dark. And then here. So if this had been an illustration, like that I did for newspapers, I would be making it all up, just as I'm making this up. Uh, you're not limited to, to anything. You're not limited to reality. You can do whatever the hell you like. Uh, we can do that in any painting, actually. But um, you're not. Uh, you don't have to paint reality. Make. And uh, this is being painted on, I suppose, a specialist paper. Point that line there so I can know where, where I am. We used to always look out our, our bedroom window. In fact, this would have been higher up. You wouldn't be able to see down on it from these windows. You'd kind of see across and up at it. But, uh, you know, let's say, for example, that was our bed. That was our bedroom there. Myself and my brother. Well, all three of us, actually, for a while. All three brothers and you know, two sisters. They had their own room, of course. You'd, you'd expect. And you can imagine the ructions that went on in, in that place. Bickering. Arguing over who gets what. <laughs> Might is right, isn't it, among brothers? Let's put in some uh, darks. Underneath the cars there. I can change the colour of the cars. And when I was there, see, all the cars would have been sort of, you know, Morris Miners and Triumph Heralds. The vans would have been Commerce. Do you remember them? Funny looking things. It never stopped. And I always remember going off down, walking down here to the Scouts. I used to go to the Scouts with my best friend from school, Mark. And uh, he, uh, You'd know the sort of, of walking the gauntlet every day. <laughs> there was a bloody horrible couple of gangs down there. 
I remember getting the punched so hard in the face by one of these characters uh, that split my lip and I got mouth ulcers and uh, terrible all, all week and then ne next week my eldest brother decided to come along with me to uh, to take my part I suppose I was only about 10 or whatever and they weren't there so I never got uh, to see any revenge but I'll get them one day. Don't you worry. Ivo, yeah, the old cars were very nice. My first car, in fact, my first car was uh, Triumph Herald. I think it was a 1968 uh, Triumph Herald that I got for, a, you know, not very much in 1984. And that's what I used to drive. And before I even passed my test, I was going around in the city, around the locality. Yeah. Illegally, it was. It was. It was. They had real style, didn't they? Now they all look as if they were cut out of a pattern book. It's hard to tell the difference between. Let's see. They're all kind of red brick houses. I don't want to make them too light there. When I was doing illustrations, I'm, I'm kind of painting at a, a kind of a distance at the moment because I've got to put my arm through the uh, through these cameras, and I'd be much closer up in reality. Normally, I should say, rather than in reality. I'll just put in a little bit of an indication that the Martini building was. Uh, white. And just a bit further down was the Mercedes-Benz uh, building, which was a, it was shaped like the top of a, a ship, you know, like the superstructure, you know, where all the cabins and uh, ballrooms would be, because it was built in the 30s in the golden age of, of ocean liners. out here on the street, going around on our bicycles, and even to the point of uh, one day we decided to play jousting like knights in armour, except on bicycles. And I stupidly agreed to this, and so we each took our brooms, that's why we were using broom handles as lances, and we had at each other along the road. Of course, my eldest brother had a much longer reach than me, and I got the broom right in the teeth. And he was so, uh, he was so horrified that he would get into trouble, probably more likely, that he, uh, he gave me, a, I think, one of his Airfix models. I was satisfied with it. God. This would be much the same kind of colour too. Of course there were fences all up here along the side back. They were going last. I'm not going to uh, describe that yet. That's kind of one of the final things you would do, isn't it? Mm. Okay, so let me just fill in that. I think I need to make the cars a little bit smaller. They're too occupying too much space at the moment. Because there was a three-lane highway here. It's 
was very dusty. Loads and loads of this dust. And my school was about half a mile back towards behind me, if you see what I mean. And the school had th this um, motorway kind of it turns off at the, uh, at the point where my school is. And so it kind of came over the playground. And got all this awful dust used to be sort of uh, lying around in the playground. God knows what was in it. And then further up the road, uh, we had a, a factory called Beldum. And Beldum used to make um, tyres, I think. Everything covered in black soot. I'm painting an idyllic picture, aren't I? It's certainly far from the, the country I was... I was born. So, look at all the strokes there, sort of big at the moment. Big and... Not particularly accurately applied. All of this can be sort of done later. Let's put a dark down here. I'm getting some details over Mr. Lynch's house. And what was her name? Mrs. O'Rourke lived down along here and the Mitchells and there were two families of Mitchells in the street and they were cousins Mick Mitchell and George Mitchell all good people that was my world who else was down that road And the story went that on this stretch of motorway here when they were building it, that um, one of the Richardson gang in the 60s ended up being uh, thrown into one of the uprights while it was being built, you know, so getting rid of uh, the evidence type of job, getting rid of the body. And I had that story in my head for years and years and years, until in my class here yeah, there was another guy from London but he was from Bethnal Green, and I sort of said that story to him. He says, "No, says, that's not true. I know who you're talking about. And I can't remember what the name was supposed to be. He says he's got a normal burial up at the East End." And I said, "How do you know?" <laughs> and the next week, he turned up with this um, card. The, uh, you know, like a it was a photograph actually of one of the Craig brothers. And uh, he said, you know, to my friend, he put his name in. He says, so, you know, with all my love, because he visited him in prison to interview him as a journalist. <laughs> so that ruined my story that I've been living off all these years. That could be a window down there as well, can't it? Still there. And these houses, they had three, three uprights. There's no point in putting that in there. Let's put let's one here. One. See, that would be a doorway, a little sort of uh, access into our front door. Two. Three. There. Yeah. That would be one of the windows. And so on along that the road. And then there'd be a, a gap in that wall for each of the each of the doorways. Put that in there like that. Don't need to get too sort of descriptive there. Now 
I think I'll make the light pool a little bit towards the centre. As this turns towards the sun, which is behind us. Because the sun is setting. Hang on. Am I right? Yes, the sun is setting in the, in the, in the west. So it's that way. And it used to get very sunny. Maybe that's just a, a kind of a, a sign that you're getting old, is that you remember your summers. There's these wonderful sort of sun soaked times. Probably wasn't like that at all. Redder as it comes around here. And I'm finding the paint easier to uh, apply now. That can be there like that. There were no trees. I mean, on that side there were trees, but on our side it was just bloody hell. It was, it, it was kind of a grim road, really, if you think back on it. Do something with that roof as well. The roof reflecting the sky. I was quite high up this bit. My parents had this extra room built on, and they, of course, my brother couldn't resist climbing out to the roof from from that from that vantage point. You know, out the back of the house and up onto the ridge <laughs> to look at the traffic and everything. And my mother was round at the shops. She was telling me this a few years ago. And uh, and somebody in the shop said, "Is that your children up, up, on top of the roof?" <laughs> she had to run home. God. bit of activity as if they're slates so they're not all the same colour. Now that actually needs to come out there, doesn't it? Need a bit more perspective on that. Wrapping the perspective around the painting. And if you're interested, there's a great artist who does that kind of thing in Ireland. And he, he does a lot of work for London Transport. Um, he did a lot of posters, I think in the 2000s or whatever. Maybe he's still doing them, but the name is Jonathan McHugh. You should look him up. I think he calls himself B Pencil for some reason. Um, yeah, really good. Now, I know that there was a, a kind of a, I don't know, a soffit or something that ran down, but it'd be nice to have a kind of an indication, a kind of architectural indication there kind of gives the painting a bit more clarity, I think. And that will go all the way down. And I can brighten it as it goes around. Tell me in the in the um, in the chat, so it'd be really nice and you be helped me a, a great deal to tell me how the sound is today compared with other days. Is it any better? I'd be very interested to know. And there was a similar kind of soffit thing going all the way around there. Oops. Down there like that. And that means I can sort of do more to these sills. And then... It's always good to, to put those window frames there. You can't see there because it'd be hidden by the bricks. So just around there like that and down. Probably have to change brushes soon. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And that will come out beyond there. I always have to see going back to architectural um, uh, details and 
and just try and figure out how would it be in real life. Because sometimes you miss things. So that my house kind of looked like that. Amongst, in amongst all the other houses. Um, right. Some of the windows in the cars might help. So that'd be a good one. I think as soon as you put that, that in, it gives you a much better notion. There you cars there. I'll change the colour of some of those cars later. They'll also have you know, the old bumpers. Or like that. Not those cockamamie plastic things that they've got these days. They're proper bumpers. You could bump things with them. Like cyclists. Let's have, that's going to have to move around there a bit. Um, put a bit of. Oh yeah, the, the paint really just feel. Just once you get that past that initial stage of. First couple of coats, it starts feeling much nicer. Not like oils, but its own thing, you know. It's a bit pink. I didn't want it to be that pink. Couldn't stop along here to get us. My brother was run over, sort of, but he wasn't just around here. Make sure he was okay. But, um, he shot my mother. You know, you know so rather sort of getting found out from climbing on top of the roof or getting run over. Getting approached by strange men in the, in the parks. Life as a child. Now, back to the cars. Let's put in a bit. Let's, let's have a blue car for God's sake. And I can shift some of it over there like that. And get my. and maybe I can put one coming in from the end there and the same up here those will be further away so they can be smaller like Father Ted right. let's make a slight purplish colour the shadows. It's not dark enough. Oh, yeah. Just in there, just underneath, in line with the central reservation, the motorway, there's a fence that's supposed to stop people running across all the time. And, uh, because down at that end, there was a subway. You could sort of, uh, you could cross the road by just going down the subway. We used to just run across and vault the fence. Over there. And these uprights, these co huge concrete uprights on which the uh, motorway is sitting, they're crumbling because they're having to be replaced.
That's after what? I suppose 50 odd years. Concrete should last longer than that, shouldn't it? That's all shadow there. Let's send all of that into the distance. A bit of white into it. Into that green. something ball with that sky. That sky. So blue again, really. Just to keep things simple. Ultramarine blue and white. Hmm, maybe I'll make it slightly a touch greener. the smog and I can do some uh, clouds shape that tree line there I think remember the martini building had a kind of blue clock in it I think it's still there. There was a, I'm looking at a video, maybe that's too big, I'm looking at a video by um, this guy, from, I think he's from London, he does walks all the way around London, he just chooses an area and goes walking around it, and he did this area as well. It was weird to see it represented like that. and how would you say perspective there we go there so any any sort of uh, feedback on the on the sound I don't know if it's any better than it was before because I've done something that I think improves it and I'll keep doing it if it's if that works down around here where all those trees are will be Gunnersbury Park a place where we used to often go with mum you know on Saturdays and they had a they had a boating uh, pond, with little sort of pedalo boats. I used to love going there. And over that side, over beyond those trees, Brentford football ground. We used to hear them getting beaten every week, or every second week. 
They were much better now than they ever did back when I was a lad. Fair play to them, they've got a nice new ground as well. Proper football ground. The other one was used to bunk into it once in a while. But. Football, playing it was uh, what I loved. I didn't really sort of follow any particular team though. Right, a bit more with that road. Um, that slightly kind of purplish. Pinky. It really used to be sun soaked. smaller. All the cars were fairly, they were nice looking but they weren't very uh, reliable. To break down a lot. And my Triumph Herald, every time I put it in gear, it rang like a bell in first gear, I should say. Yeah. You're going to have to make those cars even smaller. Get that claustrophobic sense into it. Yeah. Really, it's just a basically a glorified sketch. And here too. So a mixture of greys. Purpley greys, bluey greys. It was a very grey place. I'm going to add some more stuff to that. Subsequently. <coughs> this used to get blocked actually. Excuse me, wittering. I'm, I'm wittering because it, it helps me um, remember what the place is actually like. Things come back to me as I'm as I'm wittering. I'm going to go out plein air painting this summer. You know, painting from life, outdoors. And I'm going to go on my motorbike. So I will be painting, probably not with oils, but with um, acrylics. Hmm. And then this pavement again, going back to the pavement. There's a little bit of grey in there, so while that paint is wet, 
I'm going to mix a little bit of blue into this. See what I can get out of it. likelihood is, is I won't finish this tonight because as I think this and think my way into the to the environment I'm remembering more things it's actually sort of I have to make a choice about what to leave out but even so there's a lot in there again. Just re restate that. You know, if, you ever see, if, you, if we were going to holiday in Ireland, we'd have to go down there and do a switcheroo at uh, the, I think the Hogarth Roundup, was it the Hogarth Roundup? Yeah. Anyway, the one that's near Kew, and, uh, and come back around and we'd pass, pass our own house. We couldn't really see anything, it was too, we were too high up. I think a smaller brush is in order. Let me have a look for one. Well, I can sort of describe. Oh, that's gone as hard as I rock that one. Hurry up, let you. Yeah. This one might do it. Um, so, other. Other f street furniture <laughs> or car furniture, for example. When did the, the yellow number plates come in? I can't remember, but we'll have one because they look good. Maybe that could have one too. And then you wouldn't find anyone parking it, uh, the other way around because you couldn't do it. You couldn't get your car up there, facing towards us. Um, One day, myself, my sister Brenda, and little Jackie Mitchell were walking along around it down here, coming back from the shops where we bought ourselves some sweets or something. And a big dog lent its head, or got its head out of the car where it was, and took hold of my arm bit of chunk out of my arm. And had it been Jackie on my side, she'd have had a face bitten. So, I suppose that was lucky, wasn't it?
and, 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 and what I liked in the old cars, in fact, were the two-tone ones. Let's put one in there, like Humbers and things like that. They were a bit like that. Put in the window. And then on the top they were kind of light coloured. Do you see two-tone cars now? I not recall seeing it. Yeah. lighter than that. Chrome was everywhere. Shadows. Cars are casting shadows forward at, at this point in the road. We had white vans, can't even remember that. Or was that a, a 1980s thing that came in? Green was a kind of a, a good colour of the day. Plenty of green. Kind of cool green. Quite a few darks as well for the tires, for example. And of course, casting a shadow. And what else I shall do is why not describe at least some of the road markings. all over the place. As far as I remember, they were never sort of, they were never together. And to be honest, I don't even know if they were on the motorway. Well, they must have been on the motorway, mustn't they? One, two, three. Have to be like that, wouldn't it? Anyway, that kind of that kind of thing. And also the light will be catching, or I want the light to catch. Hi, uh, welcome to my channel and to uh, this YouTube video. I'm so glad that you're taking the time to watch it. Um, I produce these videos uh, every week, uh, or as near to every week as I possibly can, to uh, to offer out uh, my views on uh, good ways to paint and to give you demonstrations and everything. So, if you are enjoying it, uh, you know you can always leave a, a tip. There's a, a, a thanks button just below the video, uh, or if you come to the live streams, you can uh, you can do a live chat 
and uh, offer a tip there. Or if you look in the description below, you can buy me a coffee and that would be a great way to support me. If you can't do that, um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, please do leave a thumbs up, uh, maybe join the channel and comment. Commenting is good. The uh, YouTube algorithm picks that up and it works tremendously in uh, you know, to promote this channel. Okay, so uh, getting on with the video now. Uh, I hope you get a lot out of it. On that curb. Because there was no curb to speak of, really. It's just a slight curb. Um, um. Let me grab some more purpley colour. Put the yellow into it so it's not too not too bright. And then there was this rail kind of over, I remember. You need to look at it from a bedroom window. Coming around there like that. Oh, I'm stretching my arm up around the camera. Can only do it by sort of brushing it. So it's kind of larky going on, doesn't have to be done too accurately. Yeah. I'll maybe I'll put another one in there eventually. Maybe that could be more clearly stated. Do you know what? I went when I'm done with this, like uh, I'm gonna have to sort of take this down and just deal with it sort of on a flatter level and away from those cameras. And then maybe I'll just stick up a, a post with a, a scan of it eventually. There. Because I want it to be a good deal more refined than this. because that's the kind of obsessive completist I am. Let me do some delineations around the, the trees. What trees they were there. Yeah. Must be planes or something. They're quite big. Now, let's get some reds into that roof. Just needs it, I think. Just to sort of show that it's a a slate roof, I suppose. Maybe a touch more blue into that. Mm. 
And also there was a, apparently, according to Mr Goldsmith, who used to own Performance Cars, which is down our end, if you see what I mean, there was a Second World War German bomb hit up that side, up, and there was a crack running through that, all the houses, or many of the houses. That may have been true, or it may not have been true. A bit of a slippery one in. Got a light getting in there, hitting the uh, far wall. We exaggerate that a bit more. Got a bit of a crick in my neck now. Maybe I'll be a bit ambitious with this one, but anyway, look. I'm just trying it out. Uh. I don't even know if there's anyone still there. This was one of those awful buildings with. Probably not even there now. I don't think anyone's going to miss it. With all the shirts and sheets that generated a kind of a Van de Graaff generator of, of, uh, of electricity, static electricity. <laughs> Truly awful bed sheets. How long have I been doing this? Let me see. It says... What's it say? <laughs> 4 59, 5 o'clock. It's 20 past 6 now. <gasps> oh my god. Um, let me go back. I'll do a few more strokes. And a little bit of green in that sky, wasn't there? A bit more white. down a wee bit too high. I'm quite advanced in this uh, in this painting. So I kind of, kind of got further than I thought I would at this stage. I used to be very quick. Do at all. Let's get some uh, some clouds over Acton. Let's 
It's not smog, actually. Anybody there would care to tell me whether they can hear me or not? Testing out this new set of microphones. And I think if they're as good as I think they are, I think I might buy myself a set. But don't tell my wife. It costs a fortune. <laughs> hey Ivor. So tell me, what, what do you think of the sound? Is it better or, or the same as, as usual? And maybe it kind of doesn't make any difference once uh, it starts going up to... up to uh, YouTube. They have a tendency to compress everything anyway. I think what I might do is actually move the houses in a wee bit. Just at that at the far end of the street. Better. Good. That's that that's really uh, gratifying. I did a test earlier on and it did seem uh, good. The microphone I was using before cost me well. 20 euro and, and it served me very very well um, but uh, I think it's time for an upgrade and these things these things uh, 280 euro more than 10 times the price so I need to know whether they're they're worth having Nice and clear, good. There was a kind of a bit of a bit of a buzzing off the other ones, uh, which I kind of used to have. Or, or, <clears throat> I had been taking out uh, in the edit because you can do that with iMovie. You see, so, um, it's a reasonably simple operation, but it's, it's, I'd rather not have to do it. It's just another thing to uh, to take care of, I suppose. Yeah, I'm going to move this one over. Actually. I can I can do that when I, I can get close to this uh, painting. It's awful, it's awfully difficult to actually get close to the the painting with the cameras in the way. There's nothing that can be done about that unless I had a super duper camera which was behind me rather than in front of me. Um, it's not going to change. I, I looked into those prices of those things and they're they me palpitations. Okay. So you're now 
looking at more or less what my memory is of the place where I was born and all the all the cars that I witnessed. I witnessed the evolution of the automobile right from my house. Once again, I'm going to have to get in a lot closer to do these things. Um, that's really bright, bright. I need to put in on that sill there. Those ones there, they're catching the light the most. Okay, and I will put in, used to get lots of people passing by, shadow, People walking to work, working from work and walking back out. And women with shopping. And kids. And dogs. Thank you very much, Ida. It's really nice of you to say that, thank you, I, I, and I deeply appreciate it. And sometimes I do wonder, you know, I'm barking up the wrong tree. And sometimes when you start it out, it doesn't look any good, and if you just persevere, it, it actually ends up looking better than you imagined it would. Which is uh, which is a good thing, I suppose. See, look here. Look, these are all going. These are all going sort of uh, away from us. The cars on this side. So there'd be red lights at the back. Let me see. Um, be red lights, but then they'll be glinting, won't they? That kind of thing. That's too long, that car. But I just want to sort of do a couple of things. I wanted to put those in just to show you the way it's going to develop once it's off here, because it, I, I don't think I'll be able to finish this um, in front of you because it's just too much to that I'm thinking of that can go in and too much refinement I want to do because I want to live in this uh, painting a bit more um, before I before I finish it because it's I suppose it's meaningful to me I spent a lot of uh, my well, was, you know, our early years myself with my brothers and sisters going up and down that street Nice to do it a bit of justice, I suppose. 